Good morning, everyone. Good, Good morning. to be with you this morning. Congratulations. We've made it to the last Sunday of this, I think, 12, has it been 12 weeks? We've been in the, the Sermon on the Mount and looking at what it means to be a kingdom people. Maybe 10. I lost track somewhere. Um, but we've been looking at what it means to, to take Jesus at his word and be kingdom people and how, how that changes our lives and how God calls us to live as his kingdom people. So this morning... We are going to look at how Jesus ends this Sermon on the Mount that we've been pulling from. We haven't gone chronologically throughout this whole series, but we are going to end where Jesus ended. Um, and so today we're looking at Matthew 7, starting in verse 24, the very end of the Sermon on the Mount. I'll give you a second to find it in your Bibles or on your Bible apps or whatever you have with you. Um, Matthew 8, verse 24, the wise and the foolish builders. So it says this, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on a rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Hopefully that was your houses this last week. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. And when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority, not as their teachers of the law. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for these words from Scripture, and we thank you for your sermon on the mount. We thank you for how you've taught us so far in this series, and we ask that you teach us one more time from these words so we can leave this place transformed. And as your people, can we pray? Amen. Amen. So, like I said, this is this is our, our end of our series. This is the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And I don't know how long Jesus talked. I suppose we could kind of present it and time it and find out. But however long it took, Jesus said some really kind of subversive stuff in this sermon. He, he started with the Beatitudes, where we started our series, where Jesus called us to be peacemakers and to hunger and thirst for righteousness. And we call, we're called in this sermon to love our enemies and to pray for them. We're called to turn the other cheek. If someone hits you on one cheek, give them the other one. Turn, you know, face hatred and bullying and persecution with love. All of these kind of subversive, difficult things. In other words, Jesus says throughout this whole Sermon on the Mount, be this kind of kingdom people. Be people who live in a different way. Be people who live what, what some call a questionable life, a, a, a life that begs the question to which Jesus is the answer. That's what Jesus is saying over and over in all kinds of different ways in this Sermon on the Mount. And what Jesus ends with is that he doesn't want us to just hear these words and say, wow, that's really beautiful, or amen, and then walk away and live how we've always been and just be who we've always been. Jesus wants us to take this seriously, and he wants these words to change our lives. He wants us to live by these words and to have our lives and our being and our imaginations transformed by all of these kind of subversive, difficult, new ways of living that Jesus has given us in his sermon. So that's, that's how Jesus ends, and his statement is made even stronger if you look at what comes just before. You know, of course, this is a sermon that Jesus was given, and when, we're, when we look at it in our Bibles, it's broken up to verses and chapters, and there are different headings on different paragraphs, but when Jesus was talking, that didn't happen. It just kind of flowed one from the next. So if you look just before our passage this morning in verse 21, Jesus says this, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons in your name and perform many miracles? And I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me. And then he says, therefore, everyone who hears these words and puts them into practice is like a wise man yada, 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 as we've already heard. In other words, Jesus says, look, not everyone who calls me the right names and says the right things and goes through the right motions is really my disciple. You are my child if you say, if you take what I say seriously and put it into practice. You are in my kingdom. You are part, you're one of these kingdom people when you live out these words, not just hear them and recognize them, but actually live based on them. This isn't just something that Jesus is, is, 
is giving us you know, suggestions and it's not a conversation starter to get our juices flowing. Jesus is wanting to change our lives. He's giving us stuff of eternal significance in his words of this Sermon on the Mount. He wants us to live by them and take it seriously. And that's how, that has heaps to say about who we are as followers of Christ, Jesus says. If we follow the will of his Father in heaven, that's how we'll know we are Christians, like we just sang in that song. So, Jesus ends with kind of a parable or an object lesson. Jesus was kind of, a, he was a master preacher and a master kind of sermon illustrator. So I thought, if Jesus is going to give us a really great sermon illustration, how can we not actually try it? So, we have here, um, we have a brick, a stone, and this better be a good solid stone because I just put them on my house in a little house a masonry job we did on the corner of our house. Uh, so it's, it's pretty solid, you can come up and feel it, it's a real stone. And then on this side, if you can kind of see, we have some sand taken from, there's a sandbox outside that our preschoolers play in. So we've got some sand, and a big thanks to my daughter Nora, who I stole her blocks from this morning. Um, <laughs> So let's, let's take Jesus at his word and let's see what happens when we build a house on a rock or on sand. So Jesus says, those who, who hear his word and live by it are like those who build their house on a rock. So we'll build our little, very colorful house on a rock. And when the rains come and the winds batter down, the house stands firm. There's a firm foundation. It doesn't move. Nothing, nothing moves at all. There's nothing magical about this. This is just wooden blocks and a brick. From my house. And then Jesus says, those who, who don't hear these words and don't listen and don't follow through are like those who build their house on sand. So we'll build our house on sand. And I, ha I have to admit, guys, I had a dream that this didn't work. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. If it doesn't work, it's Jesus' picture, not mine. <laughs> but Jesus says, when the winds came, the house fell. Good job, Jesus. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> but look, the house, the house didn't stand. It sunk. It's, it's worthless. You can't live in this house. If this had been in this last week, I want to live in this house in that storm, not this one. And Jesus says that's what our lives are like if we take them seriously and if we don't. If we hear his words and put them into practice, if we live as peacemakers, and if we live as the kind of people who love our enemies and pray for them, and if we hunger and thirst for righteousness, and if we pray to God and expect an answer and try and live based on his answers, we'll have a, a strong foundation. And when the rain comes and the wind comes, we'll stand firm. And if we don't, we're sunk. That's it. It's, it's worthless. It's, it's wet and messy and and not even fun to play with anymore. If we don't take Jesus at his word, this is our lives, then we're sunk. When, one kind of criticism that sometimes gets leveled at the Sermon on the Mount is that Jesus is giving kind of a utopian, idealistic, inspirational picture, but not something he actually wants us to live by. If you look at throughout the word of the Sermon on the Mount, and think back if you've been here for a while to past sermons, you can kind of see why people might think this, is, this isn't real life, this is just idealism and kind of an inspiration, something to hold ahead of us as we try and be better, but nothing we can really live out. You can kind of see where people get that, because I think back a few weeks ago when Chris preached about um, turning the other cheek. And if someone you know, someone takes your coat, give them your tunic, too. And if someone wants you to walk a mile, walk two. And at face value, that just sounds like a really great way to get beat up and taken advantage of. And the world doesn't work that way. But Jesus, Jesus doesn't seem to care if the world works that way or not. Jesus is giving us a better and a different way to live. But you can you can see again if you if you look at love your enemies and pray for them. That's not how the world works. You know, we, in our world, in our culture, we're taught to to protect ourselves, to fear our enemies, and to hold ourselves close and protect ourselves. We're taught to work hard and and take care of ourselves and our family and and to kind of protect that and to hold that dear, not give away things when people steal from us. Not turn the other cheek when people slap us on the face. This isn't how our world works. So you can see why some are tempted to say, you know, this whole be meek, be peacemakers 
ask, seek, and knock, turn the other cheek. Those things are just idealistic pictures that Jesus wants us to hope for someday, but not actually live out. But Jesus ends his sermon with, look, if you live this way, you've got a firm foundation, and if you don't, you're sunk. He wants us to take this seriously. This isn't an idealistic image of what could be. This is how he wants our lives to actually be, day to day, on the ground, how we live. He wants us to be changed. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus shows this radically different way of living, a way of living where we're not just interested in protecting ourselves, but when we seek to protect others. A way of living where we're not looking to just care for ourselves and care for our own, but a world where we try and care for those around us. A, a life where we don't just love those who love us, but where we love our enemies, those who persecute us and hate us and, and try and bring us down. We love them and pray for them. That's the kind of life and the kind of people that Jesus calls us to be. That's what it means to be kingdom people in the eyes of Jesus. And this picture is so powerful. Again, if we take Jesus at his word, we have a firm foundation that we will not fall. And if we don't, we're sunk. End of story. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room here. You can see this is a very black and white thing for Jesus. We're either standing or we're falling down in a mud puddle. There isn't a whole lot of nuance or gray area. Jesus says, either you follow the will of my Father in heaven and you are a part of my kingdom people, or you don't and you're not. Jesus wants us to take him seriously, to take his word seriously, and to live as these kind of subversive, radically loving and hospitable and peaceful people. Jesus doesn't really seem to care how the world works. Sure, we might be more successful or more secure or more comfortable if we protect ourselves and fear our enemies and hate those who hate us and only love those who love us. That might make us have a more comfortable, easy life. But it's not what Jesus calls us to. And we'll have a better life, a more firm life in Christ if we follow his word, even if that's not how our world works around us. As I've been sort of living with this passage this week, preparing for us, I've been following along in the news. All of the, there's lots of fear rhetoric and terror and things happening around the world, and I can't help but hear Jesus in them. I think of Syrian refugees who are fleeing civil war. I read this week that at least one boat per week sinks into the ocean. A boat full of men and women and children. I picture that little toddler they found on the beach not too long ago. It sinks into the ocean and they're never heard from again, and yet we are too scared and we want to turn them away. And I don't think that's what Jesus calls us to. I don't think that's what it means to love our enemies and to pray for them. I don't think it, that's what it means to be peacemakers. And you hear, you can hear, you can apply this in all kinds of things in the news. There's all kinds of news about police brutality and racial tensions. That's not what it means to love our enemies and to pray for them and to be peacemakers and to hunger and thirst for righteousness. This isn't how our world works. This isn't what you see in the news and read in the papers and see online. But this is how God wants us to live in the face of this injustice and in the face of the pain and the terror and the hurt. He wants us to have this firm foundation because if we don't, we're sunk. End of story. That's it. It's a black and white issue for Jesus. He wants us to hear his words and to put them into practice. He wants us to be changed by them. And he's not offering this kind of idealistic interpretation of what the world could be, like some people want to turn the Sermon of the Mount into. He's not trying to generate conversation here. He's giving us a way of living and being that will radically change our lives and the lives of all of those around us if we can let the Spirit work in us and empower us to live this way. So, my challenge for each of us this morning, myself included, is let's take Jesus at his word. Let's try and live as people who bring peace and justice and light into the dark places. Let's pray to God and expect him to answer. Let's ask, seek, and knock and expect him to answer and try and live faithfully based on those answers. Let's be the kind of people that faces down hatred with love 
so that when we're forced to walk one mile, we go two, because that's what it means to love. Let's be people who, who hungers and thirsts for righteousness. And let's do it together. That's the blessing and the grace of the church, is that we don't have to do this alone. We don't have to live in this radical, different, difficult way alone. We get to do it together as God's kingdom people. So let's take Jesus at his word. Let's have this firm foundation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this challenge. And we know that by your grace and your spirit, you will, you'll hold us accountable and you will allow us to do it. You'll help us have the strength and the courage to be these kingdom people that you've been teaching us about all these weeks through your Sermon on the Mount. Lord, let us not leave this place the same, but change us a little bit as we walk out the doors this morning so that we can be those kingdom people. In your name we pray. Amen.